Uh, but one thing that really, again, I apologize for the dark slide, that really struck us this time around is the size. Uh, these, these cores are very small. Well, we knew that before, but with the new sample, it really uh, is a stark uh, and interesting pattern. If you're not going to see this uh, maximum dimension is shrunk to 50 centimeters uh, amongst the cores. And, this, and, the, and the scar count actually increased. So it just emphasized the exhaustive nature of these, of these cores. With a larger sample, we were also able to look at the, uh, do some refitting and looking at the different raw materials. And you can see each of these little piles is probably coming from one nodule, one uh, cob. So they're all the same raw materials. There's a close of a, a couple of them down here. And so we have been able to do some refitting. I mean, the, the condition of the artifacts is um, amazing. They're as if they were made yesterday. And when you put the, you, know, you can see there's some consecutive flakes coming off the core. This is another small core form of flakes coming off. This is probably a hammer stone that broke in the process of, of percussion. Another example of consecutive flakes coming off a, a core. And this one, this, there are about nine, eight or nine pieces that refit onto this uh, core. It's very small, um, but you can see that the flakes come out very well. Um, let's see if you should show this, this flake came off first, then this one second, uh, the third one over here, and then, importantly, there's, another, there's a piece sort of in the middle that came off in a perpendicular direction. So they had this very small, say, split cobble, were flaking around, then they turned it, flaked one way, and then they continued the original way, uh, which uh, you can see with this last flake with clear bulb percussion there. So this small flake was flaked off in an opposite direction, or orthogonal direction, and then it continued. So we're able to do a much better job of reconstructing the technology now with this expanded <coughs> center. So this is, this is maybe the, the symbol of our original excavation from 2000, uh, this large knife-like flake. In fact, we've got some press in the New York Times about the earliest association of stone and bones, and this was you know, the original knife that was supposedly butchering these animals. Well, it turns out that original knife has a refit partner from our 2010 excavation. So here's that knife in the picture. It actually turns out to be a split flake. We found the, other, the conjoining set over here, and so now we have this reconstructed large flake, and we're able to, again, see how this flake was split, and then they used one side to knock off flakes further after that. So the one aspect of our continuing research, and this is, uh, includes so new OGS-7 material. Uh, we, have, we were able to ask new questions about it and, and provide some preliminary answers to those. But we still have to address questions about variability here between East Gona and Undagona, and we will hopefully be, we'll be doing that with uh, some further uh, replicative studies, more in environmental information, and seeing if there's a contrast between the two areas, um, and perhaps even uh, expanding that 2.6 sample to other sites, which are represented going. One thing that did also come out of the, the work that we did in 2010, which I've already mentioned, is the, the small size of the, the, the cores and probably maybe even the cobbles that, that were originally used. Well, it turns out, and I apologize for this complicated stratigraphic column, but here's the geology at Gona in a nutshell. Um, date, at least in the Busadima formation, from 3 million years ago up to, say, 100,000 years ago. And the earliest archaeology, here's OGS 7 here, really comes in uh, where there's a disconformity uh, in the geological record. In other words, right around that time, there's these river cobbles, this channel that cuts through the set of, that's what really defines the Busadina formation. Um, we had thought, essentially, that the earliest, the Katagona and the Undagona material, started when this, the cobbles first entered Gona area, which makes sense. This is the source of stone tool, of, of raw materials. But 
and looking further uh, in some areas, there is actually there's another cobble bed below the, the Undagona and Hadagona sites that may date even earlier to perhaps set 2.7 million years ago. So we've looked more closely at this cobble bed. Uh, we've seen it before, but the, the cobbles are so small that we thought, well, it couldn't possibly be a source of raw material because the pebble is just really pebbles. Well, considering the OGS 7 cores are so small, maybe, maybe there is actually something to it. So we have looked in a little more detail at this lower conglomerate. Here's this 2.6 ash, 2.7 really. So this lower first conglomerate to see if there's any archaeology. And uh, here's, here's an example of that conglomerate. You can tell that the cobbles themselves, cobbles and pebbles, are, are pretty small in most of the area. And, but in some places, they're, they approach a size that you might expect would be flakeable and, and used for stone to manufacture. Uh, the result at this point, we have not found anything <laughs> at 2.7 associated with this conglomerate. Uh, at least, so at least it's going on. Well, it's not entirely true. We did. A few years ago, we were walking around at this level, 2.7 million years ago, and we're finding the, we found these small little stone pieces that if you look closely, I mean, they really do look flaked. And there's, there were about nine or 10 of them in one spot, 2.7 on the surface. We were kind of wondering ourselves, okay, this, this could be the old stone <coughs> tools, or what's going on here, just really do look purposely well, as we sat there for a few minutes, kind of scratching our heads, wondering what this, what this could mean, uh, the Afar workers came over and started laughing at us. <laughs> they said, oh, these are kids' toys. <laughs> they were making these, the kids, local kids, were making these uh, camel effigies. They're pretending that they're herding camels. And they just stacked them up as they, they play, would play camel. So they're confusing the archaeologists. <laughs> okay, so one other area that we've been working in lately is, as I mentioned, the, one of the earliest Acheulean sites about 1.6 million years ago. Uh, and we have a couple of those sites at Goan that we plan to publish. Of course, the, well, I don't know, look at this thing here. <laughs> uh, and we know now in East Africa, the earliest Acheulean dates to about 1.75 million at places like Konzo in southern Ethiopia and Kokisale site in western Kenya. Uh, but but uh, going on, we also have sites that date from 1.6 to 1.7 amongst the earliest, especially Wundagona South 12 site and the BSN uh, site 17 and 12. They're probably about 1.6 to 1.7 million years old. And these are some of the artifacts we're finding at these sites. We've been working here for many years throughout the 2000s. Now, let me just show you a few slides from, from each side. This is BSN 17. BSN is Busadima North. Uh, it's very closely associated with the Bulahinan Tuff over here on the side of the outcrop, which is dated to 1.6. They know this from deep sea cores in the Gulf of Aden. They've been able to correlate the tuff. It's the same ash, so it's an air, air, air flood. The site itself is associated with a column conglomerate, very much like the earlier sites that have gone in. So the source of, rum, of stone is very close to the site. We excavated here for a couple of years. Didn't have a lot of luck. On the surface, there's these beautiful looking picks. Uh, for example, these, these guys here. And they were found on the surface below here. We excavated in the outcrop and found some material, including stuff where you might, I don't know, proto biface. It's a bifacially flaked core. Uh, this piece, which really, must be a, a midsection of a pick, and this piece, which actually is a tip of a biface. But we never found a complete biface, but we're pretty confident that the Acheulean material does come from here. And OGS 12, which is a, a different part of the Gona area. Um, the site, you can see the remains of the site up here. There's a volcanic ash just below the site. This ash is 1.69 million years ago, so the site itself is a about that 1.6, 1.7, something on there. Also like the other sites. Uh, but it's different. The artifacts here are almost all basalt. So the raw materials are different. There's no channel in the area that we can find. So it's, it's some distance away from the source. Uh, we 
here's some large flakes, piece of flakes that fit back together at the site. There's fauna associated with the artifacts at, uh, at this particular place. So the, these two sites really give us, well, and, and work that we continue to go back and, and find things. This is just a few years ago, finding this big pick uh, at OGS 12, and even just last year, finding more. We went to the site and found these little two things peeking out of the side wall, and lo and behold, there's a, another pick to be found there, made out of solvent. Not, not surprising, but it's, uh, uh, you can see the, the volcanic ash would be, would be right down here. So these two sites, OGS 12 and the other site, OGS 17, are really going to, we're working up the information now, we're really going to help us understand what we might consider early homo erectus or homo ergaster behavior because they're in different settings. Two sites the same age, they're in different settings, they're recording different uh, patterns of raw material, transport, this site being much further away from the original, original source of raw materials. So they're moving a lot around a lot, a lot more. And, and, I mean, you see the refinning. They had to carry them a very large boulder from some distance, and they, they were flaking at the site. So that's, that's a very interesting difference from what we've seen before. Um, having worked amongst these earliest Acheulean sites, we're, of course, curious as what happens in between. Why this new technology at 1.7 or so million years ago? Is there an ecological change? And there could be some drawing and, and uh, going on that is, is conditioning this, this uh, emergence of new technology. Um, if, does it happen in certain settings only? Is there a certain new behavior that's really being selected for? Um, in order to answer those, we need to really even go before the earliest Acheulean to try to figure out what's, what's happening. And fortunately at Gona, we do have sediments that date between, say, 2 million and 1.7, or we were looking at sediments between 2.1 and 1.6 million years ago. And there aren't very many places that have this time range represented. So the last two or three years, we've been doing some survey in this time period with some help from Senier, thank you. He loaned us some personnel for our survey. It's, these guys actually weren't even there when it was that hot. It was very reasonable. <laughs> it was pretty good. Some of, we've been finding, actually I have to say, maybe about 10 sites at least through this uh, time period that we didn't know before, including pieces that look very Acheulean-like with the uh, pigs and hand axes, some looking more mode one or older one like, and some, sometimes a mix. There are places that also have uh, good fauna, so we're finding pig teeth, we're finding a lot of a wide range of fauna at some of these locations, uh, and sometimes with even one of these bones in the bottom here, it actually has some cut marks on it, but I don't have a close up of it. So the survey has been very productive, and this, just this past field season, 2000, in February, we uh, started excavating one of those, a uh, site called B, we call BSN 70. We chose it because it was pretty clear that there was an archaeological horizon that we could expose. And also, it's not evident here, but there's a tuff right on the top here that caps this little uh, outcrop. And this tuff is it's called the subwaterfall tuff. It's probably 1.7 million years ago. So we're now going a little bit before 1.7 uh, and finding archaeological remains that, you know, maybe, a, you know, we're finding basically mode one uh, artifacts, but they're a little bit larger. So we're, we're trying to understand what, you know, what, how, how this transition transition happens. Is it just simply the large pieces that uh, that's being chosen for and that that's the change? Or is there something more functional going on? But we'll, we're, that's one thing, we're, the questions we're asking, and, and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of them with excavations like BSN 70 and a few other places that are about the same age, about well, 1.9 to 2. Well, Gona is not just archaeology, and if people out there are more into fossils than the archaeological record, you can wake up now, because I'll show a few slides, <laughs> of the uh, hominid fossils. Uh, and this is where I think we need to, to turn the, the video. Uh, <laughs> actually, these are, these are published, these are the ones that I'm showing here, published in 2005. This is Artipithecus, 4.4 million year old uh, fossils from Gona. 
that uh, complement the material coming from the, the middle awash and the RDA material there. Uh, it is the proximal phalanx and uh, mandible, of course. This, however, has not been published. This is a spectacular uh, maxilla of a Artipithecus, um, complete pretty much. I mean, the RD fossils from Middle Amash, of course, were spectacular, um, but they don't have a complete maxilla, so this is great news. And just last year, we have a mandible to go with it. Not the same site, but it's a complete mandible of Artipithecus that uh, we'll be very excited to, to share with everyone in more detail in the next couple of years. Um, there's also material older that goes back even older than 5 million, but just a scattering of teeth, so not much to, not much to see. This is uh, BSN 12, homo, early Homo erectus, uh, partial skull, partial cranium, that along with this skull that also has not been published, uh, the Dan 5 skull, dated to about 1.5, 1.6 million years ago, will really, I think, provide some interesting information in terms of variability in early Homo erectus. Uh, in general. And these sites were associated with artifacts. It will be a, a joint uh, a fossil and archaeological uh, presentation. This was this is the Gawi skulls. It's 400,000 years old. It's found in 2006. Um, another spectacular skull. It's just, it's, uh, well, I won't say too much about it. Because, but the only thing I will say is that at the same time period, 400,000, there's an archaeological site about a kilometer away. It's the same, it's, it's contemporary. And we excavated the site, or partially excavated the site, to test to see if we can find in situ uh, Horizon Din. Uh, right below where Seleshi is kneeling here, there were artifacts in place. Um, the archaeology is pretty interesting because you have these small discords, small bifaces. Uh, on the surface, and we're finding up just here on the ground something larger. We're finding in the excavation these big, uh, we call it either cleaver flakes or small, you know, uh, looks like even Kumbaywa technology. 400,000 year old, like late or terminal Acheulean mixed in with some MSA like or even Lavalwa technology uh, at, at the site. So that's going to be, you know, this is, this is work also in progress. Uh, but it should prove to be a pretty interesting uh, um, and very informative about what's happening around this time for three to four hundred thousand years ago. So I guess in, in sum, uh, some of the work that we've been doing lately really reinforces work that already had been done at the very earliest archaeological levels. Uh, we're sort of in the midst of analyzing and reporting on some other important time periods at like 1.6 really Chilean. And, but as you can tell, there are other, I didn't even mention a few other sites uh, that sort of will be in the future for, for Gona and will supply a very interesting, like, com well, relatively complete Paleolithic record from one place from the earliest time periods up to the late Middle Stone Age, I would say. So, I would field any questions if, if you have any questions, but again, I thank you for your attention and I hope, uh, hope to continue uh, learning about what you're doing here as well.